Does anybody else have announcements to make? Or is two surprise babies? Are we good with just two surprise babies for one evening? Right? Okay. Just checking. Every time we sit down and have an announcement, there's a baby. I think I came up here too early. <laughs> Chef, don't leave me hanging, man. <laughs> a boy, a boy. A boy. <laughs> okay, I, <laughs> I have to ask you, the first like six minutes of this movie, I wasn't hungry coming in, but I had to get popcorn midway through. I got really hungry, right? A couple people I saw leaving. So I think 99% of this theater would watch that and just get hungry. But what do you see when you're watching that? Do you also get hungry? Do you admire? Do you think? What do you do? You know, the first time I saw the movie, that was at least about 15 years ago. <laughs> and uh, I was with a friend. You know, the first uh, scene when we saw, you know, she loved Chinese food. Yeah. And she said to me, you know what, we got to eat Chinese food after this. <laughs> you know, the first 15 minutes. Yeah. And, you know, uh, you know food is very, it's a funny thing. You know, everybody can relate to it. And sometimes, um, you know, you question yourself and you see on screen, you probably ask, I wonder what does it taste like? Sure. Because something you never taste before. Yeah. So I find that, uh, you know, from food from different part of the world, uh, when you see food which is not related to your culture, you always have a curiosity. But Chinese food is very common if you look at, you know, living in Canada. Right. And this was specifically Taiwanese style yeah. cuisine. And we were talking before, you're, you're Cantonese. So I am Cantonese. This yes. style of food, how would it, just getting into the food geeky part of this before we get into anything else, well, what is this style of what? the definition of Taiwanese food. You know, style. Taiwanese food is, is very interesting. You know, Taiwan uh, has been, uh, you know, has been occupied by Japan 50 years. Right. So the history is quite deep. Of course, uh, everything comes from China. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, you know, when, uh, <laughs> when um, you know, when Taiwan um, established uh, as, a, as a country itself, you know, uh, there are many invasions. So, you know, if you look at Taiwanese food, and it is an island, uh, it's situated in, in the Pacific and also surrounded with uh, water. So lots of seafood. Yeah, we saw so that. So Taiwanese is actually a lot of uh, uh, the heritage of uh, Chinese has come from Fujian, uh, which is, uh, you know, southern part of China. Wow. And they are very famous with tea. And, you know, in the movie, you know, they are talking about tea, the mountain tea. Yeah, what was that? Uh, so tea in Taiwan, it, they, they, they often, you know, when you go and visit them, uh, they often give you tea as a present. Oh. And that's a, such a very Taiwanese thing. Um, when it comes to, you know, uh, the cuisine, uh, also uh, yeah, the influence, uh, a little bit of that Japanese, very light, very sweet, uh, is always uh, in part of that uh, Taiwanese cooking. So, uh, you know, with the land and the sea, uh, most often you see the food would have, you know, you know, chicken with seafood cooked together. But in this film, uh, it is a very classical, uh, I would say, imperial Cantonese style food. Oh. You know, everything and about soups, techniques. Lots of soups and yeah, seafood. Right, techniques. Yeah. But also there are some northern dishes too, you know, the dao ban zheng, the bean uh, sauce uh, when he was putting yeah, yeah. on the fish. Yeah. You know, that's a very northern style dish. Uh, you know, you have uh, steamed chicken soup that reminded me of uh, when I was a kid. I totally associate with that soup as a Cantonese. Um, so, so there's uh, overlap in styles. I'm sorry? Like there's overlap in styles, whether it's Cantonese or, or Taiwanese. You, you saw some overlap in the style of food. Oh, very much so. Uh, you know, I find it really interesting. You know, not just talk about food, even the way this film shot. Uh, in a very kind of has some Japanese influences. Sure. For example, there's a setting, you know, after the funeral, the father and the daughter with the umbrella sitting and crying. Yeah, yeah. That's a totally a classic Japanese style scene. And some of the, uh, you know, the uh, in the room, you can see some of that really kind of has that feeling of the tatami room. Uh, has What's that? that a little bit of that. Uh, the tatami uh, room? Yeah, you know, in the house. Oh, oh. yes. Uh, and I find that, uh, you know, uh, watching that film, uh, there's so many different layers, you know, re related when I was a kid going to school, 
you know, running around that hallway, you know, the yeah. teacher finding she's really hot. <laughs> <in this too. laughs> so, you know, those are little things that really I find that movie was really close to my heart. As a chef, you yeah. know, as a you know, family, uh, a man have uh, children. Uh, you know, many years when I saw that movie, when I was, uh, you know, 15 years ago, my kids were, you know, still living with me. And, you know, after that, they move away. I found myself now I cooking more at home just to bring them home back together and sitting in the table. Your Chef Chu. That, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the new so, Chef Chu. Yeah. Well, I, I watched it, and I, like I was telling you, I thought a lot about, well, I thought a lot about you, and I thought a lot about Chef Chu as a character, and I thought about what makes you guys either like or, or different, and I wanted to ask you a couple things. One, even going back to the beginning, why do you think it was important for Ang Lee to really make it clear that Chef Chu was clearly a gifted chef, a gifted craftsman? Is there, are there things in common that a gifted craftsman or a gifted chef would have with a good friend, a good father, uh, you know, is there, is there a commonality there? Why was it important for us to see that right in the beginning? You know, that, that movie really, uh, you know, it has so many different parts of uh, a relationship. You right. know, there's a great friendship. Uh, there is also a, a friendship with the daughter. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, you know, um, just the compassion with food, the relationship with food that he has. And of course, his discipline with his training. Uh, you know, the, the film was shown uh, that restaurant is one of the biggest restaurants in, in, in China. Is that real? In Taiwan. Yes, it is real. That's a real it's restaurant? It's a national, I've been there myself, and it's a huge restaurant. So it's very famous. Um, you know, I, I, I would just, it's almost like going to Xi'an Tao. You have to be visit, uh, oh. you know, when you go to Taiwan. Um, you know, I, I find the film was very, um, you know, have so many different parts of uh, relationship and love and compassion. Uh, and also surprises. Yes. Yes. And, and they're, yes. Pro they're part of it, uh, you know, which I'm not so crazy about it, is, 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 you know, there's the religion part of it. Right. That has been spoken a bit too much in right, the right. movie because I'm not religious. I'm an atheist myself. So uh, uh, I find that that was interesting with uh, all these different relationships with God and, and food and mm -hmm. friendship and, and, and being a father and daughter with boyfriends and all that. And yeah. it was really a, it was a very well done uh, movie. You know what was interesting? Is it a film or a movie? We were talking yeah, about Yeah, we that. were talking yeah. about that. We were, the TIFF people are explaining to us the difference between TIFF, movie, uh, what was the other one we learned film? today? <laughs> film. There's Sorry, there's other. film, movie, and we learned another one today. Yeah. We, were, we had some wine. Um, can't remember. <laughs> a story. What was it? Was it a story? Yeah, we learned a bunch of stuff. Um, you know what was interesting? When when Chef Chu was preparing all these meals and everything, he was he was clearly communicating through the effort, through the love he was putting into it. And I watched it now the second time in a row, and I was really watching this. He never really spoke at the table. Did you ever notice that? He never actually really said that much, but he was using the food to do the communicating for him. So do you find yourself doing that now as you, as you kind of think about your kids coming back home and do you let the cooking do the talking for you? Or yeah, do they just I think, talk you know, you? you got a very good, uh, you know, in interesting question. You know, y cooking is it's, uh, such an internal thing. When you're, when you're cooking with something, uh, in front of you, of course, you know, there's knife. Actually, working in the kitchen is actually a very dangerous place, first of all. Uh, so, you know, when you're cooking, you are very in the moment. Right. So, you know, the sound with everything you cut, everything, everything you scrape or everything, you, the movement. So, you know, you're very focused. You know, uh, you know, my, my son uh, always trying to, hey, Dad, I want to film you at home. Uh, you know, can you set it up? And I, I would money. find it so frustrating for me because <laughs> I don't set it up, just cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he said, stop, don't do this. Let's do it again, you know? So it's like, you know, again, the filming, right? Right. So uh, I find that, uh, you know, uh, in this movie, uh, it was really uh, showing the professionalism. You know, the master, you know, he's in the moment. Yeah. And do you think, you know, as a master chef who has a family at home, can you cook with the same feeling in a restaurant setting that you would for a table of five people that are your family? I do, actually. You know, um, I start ordering my wife around. 
<laughs> passing me things. <laughs> That's me dangerous, chef. <laughs> It's like my sous chef, you know. That's a dangerous You know, um, I, I find that when I have, uh, you know, friends and family coming to my restaurant, uh, to, my, to my home. <laughs> yeah, you see, it came out already. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, 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 I like to uh, cook something that I want to share with them personally. Right. Because it's not just professionally. You know, something is uh, it's worth nurturing. You know, something I would sit down and I would enjoy eating with them. You know, we found ourselves sometimes cooking at home. Uh, after you made the dinner, you said, oh, I'm so full now. I can't even sit down eating with my, yeah. Yeah. With my friend and, or my family. So uh, I, I don't have that feeling. Every time I finish cooking, I'm as hungry as they are. <laughs> so uh, it, it is a very uh, 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 a good feeling, you know, uh, cooking... Uh, you know, when you're putting your passion and focus and you just want the process in the beginning to the end. Yeah. And then after you sit around and with somebody that you embrace and love and he has a very totally different feeling as, as somebody coming to your restaurant. Now, has, have your kids ever said something like, you've oversmoked the ham? Let me think. And uh, what, there, there did, are things that really did that make you proud? Did it make you angry sometimes? Yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Yes. There is one. I, I remember. I made uh, a dressing. Okay. It was a salad, and then suddenly my son got up, and he started making a dressing, and oh. he said, "Taste this." Oh. So it was true. His dressing was better than mine. So, you know, sometimes uh, it, it is really great, uh, you know, those kind of uh, relationship is a communication. Uh, you know, cooking, it, it brings you have grown to a different level of relationship, uh, which I find that is great. Uh, you cook at home with, with your family. So are you, are you happy to bring them into your business or do you, or is there ever a part of you that says, you know, kids, I'm Seuss or Lee, like, I don't know what's, you know, do you, do you get angry at them sometimes? Like, no, I don't. You know, I you know I, I always say you know they can be me, I can be them. Uh, I think uh, you know uh, having you know have being a chef or you know running a food business uh, is one of the hardest business. Uh, you have to come naturally. Uh, it also has to come from the heart, and you have to love what you do. So those are the uh, elements uh, you have to you know uh, to have. You know, it's right. a natural born. So with my son, uh, with my family, you know, I just uh, let it be. You know, they are, in my eye, they're still young. And so, I, I, you know, let's see how the future holds. And, and on the topic of, you know, the food business and Glenn, going back to Mr. Chu, he's kind of conflicted in the movie in the sense that there's part of him that uh, holds on to tradition, right? He's cooking these traditional dishes. He's talking about, you know... I don't know if people appreciate this stuff anymore. And on the other hand, he is capable of going with the flow, obviously. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But even when his daughter says, too, look, yeah. you know, I've got this apartment, yeah. and she's kind of scared to tell him this news, mm -hmm. he says, oh, well, you know, real estate is a good investment. In it. So he's, he's conflicted in a sense, I think. How do you feel about um, where we're headed as an industry in the sense that we don't, we don't see the same traditional cuisines and the the ritual of dining in the same way we do we see a lot of hipsters and small plates and right you know with uh you know with uh chef chu he he is a very you know the the movie the character itself uh he's a very traditional well-trained and disciplined chef right but he also has another part of his life that he dealt with you know to trying to raise daughter uh and also have the chinese values and also uh, making sure that uh, they are falling in love. Uh, also, he's talking about his taste. Is it coming yeah. back? It's, it's like his life is coming back after, you know, now, you know, his, his new uh, relationship have, uh, you know, another baby. So it's starting to, uh, you know, came back to life again. Right. So the word is never so late. That's how I look <laughs> at it. It's never so late. Well, so I just as, had a baby. That's good to yeah. know. Thank you. It's interesting. I've lost my taste. Yeah. No, <laughs> Do you have a Mr. Wen? Do you have like a sidekick that you would trust implicitly to, I don't know how, what your process is, your creative process of developing a new recipe, but it's very much, as I'm sure you can attest, uh, an artistic process. Do you have someone that you trust 100% or do you just do it on your own? Oh, for like creating new dishes, mm -hmm. is that your question? Yeah. You know, um, I don't trust anybody when it comes okay. to creating a new dish. 
<laughs> you know, um, I, of course, uh, you know, I, I always say, you know, um, you cannot do everything yourself. Right. You need a teamwork. You know, when I remember why I love working in the, ki- in the kitchen is, it's, is when I was a kid, I, I, li- I like teamwork. But I do love the fact that uh, also being a teamwork, I want to be the leader of the teamwork. Sure. So, you know, that was one of those things when I was a kid. Uh, you know, I found myself working in the kitchen uh, that, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, you have to know your skill. You have to know what you love. Um, by the end, um, you know, working in, 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 uh, in, a, in a kitchen is all about, you know, how you, you know, discipline yourself. Um, I forgot the question. Yeah, I me too, actually. <laughs> it was a question. I kind of forgot, too. Do you remember, Sean? Anyone? Uncle Wen, you're oh, your Uncle Wen. You don't have an Uncle Wen. You just... Oh, my... Like your sidekick that you would trust. Oh, it's all, yes, in, it's okay. all in your brain. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't Thank have you. somebody... Uh, <laughs> yes. I, I don't have someone that, uh, you know, um, to inspire me. I think uh, when you're loving something, you get inspiration by looking at things that you're interested. And you trust your instinct. You trust your instinct, sure. you travel. You know, w- you know, with my family, you know, often people say, you know, oh, when you go to Paris, uh, you know, did you, did you go to the Eiffel Tower? I said, no, we go to three-star <laughs> restaurant. We go to like, you know, uh, bistros and we go eat, uh, you know, uh, baguettes. And we, we have a sure. different way of, you know, traveling. So food is our focus. So inspiration, it get very, uh, you know, me and my me and food has a, a very close relationship. Did you like the part where when they called him, he was like at this ER surgeon. There was an emergency at this. I didn't know that was a real restaurant, man. That was crazy. But then he he goes in there and they give him his chef whites and he's like there to save a life. Yeah. Uh, does that has <laughs> yeah. that ever happened well, to you in your that career? Like, a little bit of exaggeration. That was intense. But you know, sometimes you know <laughs> I have experience. It. Like sometimes uh, you know my my manager would call me, but you know it, it's restaurant related. And then say, chef, you know what? We don't have gas tonight. <laughs> That's where I jumped in. And I say, okay, try this, try that. And, you know, things, uh, you know, it get back to life. Sometimes we need leadership in, in, in the kitchen. But no medical No, no, med- you know, none of this, uh, yes. That it's was a, a cool part. Too, yes. I like that. Um, I think we should open it to some Q&As. Because yeah, sure. there's a lot of curious people here. Uh, maybe not. Who <laughs> who probably want to ask you some questions. If not, I got lost for you. Um, is there a mic floating around out there? Oh, there it is. Don't be shy. He's very nice. Anyone with a question, idea, thought? Right I'm sure someone the- would like to ask, uh, where is the best Chinese? Where would you go? <laughs> <laughs> Any Chinese restaurant you go? Okay, you're allowed to ask the one oh, forbidden yeah. question, if that's all we got. Please. I'd like to know, do you have any future plans of expanding your business? Are you going to start any food trucks or food court ventures or open up any more restaurants? You don't have enough restaurants as it is, man. Oh, you know, uh, I, I always have, uh, you know, um, things I wanted to try and, and do. Um, and also, you know, my, my, my family also is part of it. So, you know, yes, there would be, uh, you know, some things always come up. Do you ever get tired of that? Do you ever get tired and say, man, I've been doing this for so long, and it's obviously an industry that's ever-changing, and there's new trends, and there's no, new challenges? No, I, I, I don't. You know, uh, I, every day when I get up, before I get up, that half an hour to 45 minutes, my eyes are closed, and then I'm starting thinking about what happened last night. Wow. I needed to change the things what I saw I did not like, to improve or to think about, to mention so, you know, I get so excited. As soon as I get off bed, I start writing those things down and start changing and to improving. And it, it got me excited every day. The improvement, it got sure. me excited every day to go back to work. That's like Mr. Chu when he drank a lot with his buddy and then woke up at 6 a.m. for a job. Yeah. You're just like <laughs> yeah. that. I'm like, how did he do that? Um, but where do you think our industry is headed? What do you think is, where are we headed? Well, uh, you know, let, let's talk about Toronto itself. Yeah. I think we are in a very exciting moment. Uh, I think there are many chefs and, uh, you know, many, uh, uh, um, um, you know, inspired business restaurateur uh, want to be part of, uh, you know, in, in restaurants or you were just mentioning food truck or any kind of food court. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. It doesn't matter has to be you know anything with high end or low end. Doesn't matter or mid end. Food is really is really growing really fast for the past uh, five years, and uh, you only have many uh, you know tourists coming to our city just to discover our city. What kind of things that we have from uh, you know from Japanese food, from Korean food, from French, Italian, yeah. and and we have such a great uh, uh, you know food culture, and you know people always ask what what is Canadian food? Canadian food is everything. And, and we have it. We have from coast to coast, uh, we have amazing product, you know, from seafood to beef to, uh, you know, from vegetable, from fruits. So all these things, uh, you know, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I'm very proud being a Canadian and very proud to live in Toronto. Uh, you know, you gave me a huge platform to really uh, to create, uh, you know, Canadian food, the multicultural mm. food uh, that I has been trained, which is fusion. Um, so I, I think the uh, exciting uh, part of uh, the food scene is very strong, and music and art. You know, like for for example, tonight we can actually get a chance to talk about this food sure. and culture. Yeah. It's amazing, and it, and it really has changed, really in the last five to ten years, right? Like uh, you've been here a long time in Toronto, yes. but something has happened in the last five to ten years where I think we're coming up to closer and closer to a world-class city where you've opened restaurants in other cities like New York and Washington and you know all over the place. Well, what do you think it is about our city in the last five to 10 years that's just kicked it into high gear to bring us to this next level? I think uh, also, uh, you know, uh, there are generation changes too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think um, there are a lot of uh, faster kind of inspiration uh, people saw something, they wanted to try it right away. Now you can have any recipe in the world you can, uh, you can have. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of, uh, I call it the very short tension span in the business. You know, like, uh, I, I love, uh, you know, uh, any kind of uh, old school cooking uh, because I love that's the foundation of where everything begins. Uh, everything is so old, it means it's so new again. So... When it comes to uh, uh, this generation, uh, tension span of chefs may be a little bit short. You know, they don't continue trying the same dish and perfecting it. They move on a bit too fast. And that's the only thing I felt uh, we have to kind of step back a little bit sure. and, you know, make it over and over and, and impro improving it, the word is. But we're heading the right way, definitely. Exciting. Another question, guys? Oh, in the back there, yeah. Hi, my name is Nachi Keita. I'm a filmmaker, and uh, you mentioned uh, that your son uh, loves to film you while you cook. Have you considered, or are you working on a film that revolves around food and yourself? It's another guy wants to make money, man. <laughs> <laughs> you see, y you know, uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm not good at uh, when it comes to uh, you know. I, I I don't have patience, actually, to be honest with you. I don't have the patience to do things over and over again uh, because. Um, once the moment is done, it, it's a new thing for me. Right. And so, uh, you know, I, I think my son would be more interested. And, uh, but thanks for, uh, thanks for asking, though. I feel like it's, uh, you know, it's a common misconception, but that's a totally different thing to film cooking on TV or on film. And the discipline with that is different than cooking or developing a recipe or in a restaurant, right? Like, it's totally different different they're two different skills and very you know I, I have moments when I was doing competition and and sometimes a cameraman would say chef could you please slow down I yeah. can't follow you <laughs> so you know when I cook <laughs> I mean I, I don't have to follow you you know right, I mean, right, right. you have to follow me <laughs> the answer was no yeah you can't <laughs> just for everyone who didn't okay uh, <laughs> and no no film to be made my friend who's next hi the question here oh chef big fan <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, just wondering, so in the film, the father was kind of hesitant to share his kitchen with his daughter. Did you ever get like that with your sons when they said to you, hey, dad, I want to join the business? He made a better dressing, man. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, no, I, I, I feel there is no hesitation. You, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, um, our business is a very different kind of animal. You, you have to... Uh, um, you have to love people, but at the same time, there's moments that 
you don't like people at all because it's so, you know, it's right in your face all the time. So, you know, that business, you have to ask yourself, is, is, are you that personality? Right. You know, are you that person? So, you know, uh, if, uh, you know, I just let it be. If they join me, great. If you, they don't join me, that's fine too. So um, I, I don't feel that uh, they have to follow my footsteps. Would you say it's harder to teach people than to when, when opening many many restaurants as you've done do you think it's harder to teach people the right way of hospitality than it is to teach them how to cook a recipe i think you know uh hospitality the word hospitality itself it has to come from heart mm -hmm. sometimes it's cultural uh sometimes you're born with it uh i think uh those are the uh the, the, the most important element uh you you have to learn you know the professionalism in terms of how to, you know, make people feel like they are completely comfortable in your environment. Because, you know, when you come to your business in your restaurant or your kitchen, uh, you, you are bringing them to your environment, to, to your world, because you want to show them your great taste, to show your appreciation. So um, I, I, I really feel that, uh, um, you know, this is uh, uh, something very special in, 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 in the restaurant business. It has to come from the heart. And hard to do. Yeah, yes. it's hard to do. Where are we next? Yes. Hi, Chef. It's Mary. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> there she is. Uh, <laughs> um, so I really related to the film. Um, you know, just a Chinese background. I, you know, normally go to my parents' house on Sundays. We eat. We eat together. Right. So a question for um, Chef is, because you're so busy and, you, you know, you own several restaurants, how, do you, how often do you eat with your family? Um, and maybe advice for busy families and how to get them to either eat together or connect through food if they have different schedules? Well, you know, um, I'm very lucky. Uh, it's a very good question. You know, it, it, because my, my, my sons are in, in, in the restaurant business, so do we work at similar hours. Um, you know, for me to attract them, to see them, uh, I make lunch uh, almost every day. Really? Because I would send them a photograph, some of the dishes before I prepare. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would start cooking and sending some almost finished part. And then I would, you know, say, are you coming? So they all come. <laughs> and sometimes say, you know, bring the girlfriend. Hey. And, and so, you know, um, it is very hard because sometimes, uh, you know, your, your working hours when you come home, uh, it, it, lunchtime is great. Lunchtime, you just woke up full of energy, and then you wanted to cook things, uh, uh, you know, for those kind of short period of time. But after you finish, you know, most people work in a certain hour of 9 to 5, you come home, you're tired. It's very hard to bring those kind of feelings. Uh, so my advice uh, 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 to you is always great um, to come to my restaurant. <laughs> 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 No, I think, uh, you know, preparation is important. You know, uh, if, if you are non-Chinese or, or Chinese, uh, you know, making a few dish, uh, a stew or something, keep it in the freezer. Sure. And then the other element, it has to be quick and easy. Uh, you know, eating together is so important because we believe eating together, you think the same way. You know, the, uh, nu nutri uh, the nutrient. So uh, it's a very uh, uh, a great way to think. Um, so... We believe eating together, uh, we think the same way. And you never tried to steer your kids away from the restaurant business. You never tried to tell them, hey, listen, do something else. Because it's hard. No, no I, I, I'm not. You know, when, when it comes to that, I'm a very disciplined chef. But when it comes to, like, fatherhood, you know, parenthood, I'm not disciplined at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a wimp, you know. But, uh, uh, but I feel that uh, it's a right way uh, for restaurant business. It has to come naturally yeah. to be That's involved. That's actually yes. really great advice. Uh, there's another question right back here. Hi, Chef. Thank you. Um, first off, I love your uh, Singapore slaw. I wish there was some of that being served today. You never heard uh, that before, <laughs> have you, Chef? <laughs> Keep uh, coming. <laughs> I, I, I'm an entrepreneur, and uh, you know one thing that... I have a hard time sleeping because I'm constantly, constantly thinking about, you know, payroll, thinking about uh, that A player. Do I have the right people and so on? And as you're, as you've been growing your uh, your restaurants, 
I'm sure there's a, a lot of these sort of pain points and things that you go through that you're thinking about on a, on a regular basis. Can you share with us uh, as an entrepreneur, you know, what keeps you up at night right now? Deep. Have you tried Jack Daniels, sir? <laughs> Puts me to bed, no problem. Huh? May I ask, so what <laughs> business are you in? I'm in uh, marketing advertising. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, huh. Um, <laughs> that's um, that's a tough one. Yeah. Well, sleeping pill works too. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, you know, uh, I think the word is uh, you know you have to live with your means. The word is uh, sometimes uh, it is really great uh, to grow your business. Uh, sometimes you have to. Um, the word is you have to have a, again like a film. How you see yourself grow, uh, can you do it? You know, there are many people who say, hey, Chef Sousa, I have this location, I have this lo location. You know, please join me. You know, sometimes I say, oh, this is a great location. But, you know, I, if I don't have a team, I wouldn't say yes. You have to feel good at you have to know what you're doing mm -hmm. in order to expand. Now, to think about every day, um, to, uh, you know, you would not think about payroll, think about, you know, sometimes, you know what, it's good if you are a businessman to think about, you know, payment and money and all that, is you know, because you are good in business, in numbers. But at the same time, you know, you have to think about the creative part process. How you going to bring in more creative ideas? And that's where you that's where you put you to sleep the most at night. Because it makes you happy, number one. Uh, it, it makes you calm. It makes you excited. You know, numbers are not exciting. No. no, they are not exciting. No, they're not. Uh, and uh, I, I really found myself, there's one thing I've been practicing, yoga. I think that is one of the bigger things. Uh, it helps me a lot. It helps me put me to sleep. Uh, I suggest that. And I think with that two combination, you know, think about your creativity, how to bring in more, generate more uh, businesses. And then that would help you, uh, you know, to make you feel, you know, you know, successful that way. Get so. creative and flexible. Yes, that's exactly right. Yoga all day. In the very back, Hi see there. that flashing stick there? Yeah. yeah, I have a question about music. So you talked a bit about the sound in the film and the sound of cooking. Is there any music that you listen to while you're cooking or do you just experience the sound of cooking? Was that the sex yeah, of the city metal. music? I love heavy it metal. It was, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I, I don't. You know, uh, I, I don't... I, I, I like to cook very quietly. No music? No. Oh, I In hate the it. kitchens at the restaurant? No, no, no. Wow. No. I, I read, uh, I, I hear the pots and pans. I hear the people talking about, uh, you know, associate with the moment of uh, the food or, or, or the language of in the kitchen. That's where I really love. Uh, when it comes to have music around, uh, no. I, 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 it would drive me crazy, actually. Oh, my gosh. Yes. The prep so, cooks don't get any music. They're focused. Oh, yeah, that's Oof. the word. Yeah, you have to focus while you're cooking. In your kitchen, it's, uh, it's not casual. You're not, you're not, sing, you're not singing, uh, uh, what was that song? Uh, God saves the queen while you're cutting <laughs> julienne, you know? So it, it's hard. You will cut your fingers off. <laughs> so now when I go to my kitchen and play Taylor Swift, I'm going to feel yeah. like a real jerk, even more than I usually do. She's good. Okay. Hi, On the Mr. left here, Chef. Um, yes. Where do you shop for groceries when you're cooking personally at home? Well, you know, I, I love this place. Huh, that's, that's a marketing. Uh, right <laughs> he can't answer that question. Yeah. No, I, I share with you. You know, I, I do love, uh, you know, my wife go to Fiesta Farm a lot. Uh, I think they have a really great product. And, uh, you know, it has a lot of variety, a lot of local, especially now it's in season. Yeah. And, uh, and, and also, sometimes I, I pick things up that I have from my restaurant. Um, and I, but I find that going shopping, not in my restaurant, way more relaxing. I'm amazed that you told me before we started tonight that you were still going to the food terminal personally up to I, a couple I used years to. ago. I that, used, yes. That's amazing. Not like 20 years ago, like a couple years ago. Yes. I, I really get really, um, the word is um, inspiration because, you know, when we cook with color, when you see all these things, it's a memory. Mm -hmm. You know, you see orange, you see a, you know, a, a, a tomatillo, or you see a, a lime or a key lime. Those things, it's like a little 
kind of like a moment of capturing. So when you're making a dish, it's like picking those, those photographs down and, and, and become a recipe. So I, I love, love going to the market. Even, you know, going to uh, the terminal, you can see a very small grower, a farmer, producer. You can buy, you know, a couple of patches of things or herbs and, you know, they are happy and then they love when you are buying their things and using their herbs and using cooking in your food. So I, I, this is one of the best things, you know. Incredible. It's an organic You know, smelling kind of thing, it, yeah. talking to them. Even, you know, talking about the season, how they grow that uh, uh, vegetable and how, how, how is it, you know, how long does it keep. This is it's totally is an education. Amazing. You don't see that too often. Uh, in the back there, my dear. Uh, oh wait, sorry. I'm I'm supposed to follow this flashing stick from the ice capades. But we'll hey. get to you. We'll get to you. Hey chef, I uh, just want to ask you, what is your favorite restaurant in Toronto, except your restaurant? How what often do you get asked that question? Your favorite restaurant in Toronto? Oh. Do you get asked that once a day? You know, I I you know I am very random when it comes to restaurant. I think uh, I have a few friends. I, one of them is sitting uh, in front here, and I, I think <laughs> I, I I travel more and eat in different restaurant more than uh, than my wife. So you know, we go to so many different restaurant, and I think for me nowadays going to a restaurant uh, is more a friendship. You know, like talking about things. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, yes, we talk about food. Uh, you know, lately we went to uh, have fresh prawns, spotted prawns from BC, and then we we're just talking about you know the way how we peel, what kind of sauces we dip. You know, um, I don't have one specific uh, restaurant. We go from Indian to Chinese to French to Italian. So there's so many. That's so great about Toronto. In the very very back there, the ice capade stick. Hi, chef. Um, I have a quick question about food and sustainability, and I was wondering if you had any stance on that relationship and prop, like the future of food and how it's going to help our earth. Well, um, you know, vegetarian is really the future. Um, is that a passing trend, do you think? Uh, I, you know, I never felt that is a trend oh. because it's always been with me. Uh, uh, when I was back in Hong Kong, I was learned uh, for almost one year as a macrobiotic. And I was a very uneducated uh, uh, when, it, uh, when I started that, that diet because I did not know such a, such a, uh, a deep uh, study, macrobiotic. So I started for one year, but, uh, but it was so strong that uh, I felt guilty every time when, because I was cooking tasting a little bit of uh, uh, the taste of meat or the sauces. So, uh, so I, I stopped, but I have a great knowledge. But if you look at the future of food, really, vegetarian food, it is the future of food. You know, because there are such a variety of things that, you know, uh, um, um, from different culture. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, the study of sources of different, from vegetable protein, uh, from different uh, values of nutrient, from vegetables, uh, from beans. Uh, from seeds. So uh, I, I think that that is really the future. I don't know if there's a lot of vegetarians in our audience. For today. example, my slaw. <laughs> yes, the eight. <laughs> Go right now. I, I still think vegetarians are underserved in Toronto. I still think there's room for a lot of great vegetarian true, restaurants. Yes. I think that you guys are underserved, honestly. You're welcome. Oh, wait, I got to follow the stick. So you see my instinct. I see a hand. I'm like, yes, you, but I've got to follow the, the, the flashy stick, that thing. Now we can address you. Here we go. Hi. I know you've had an amazing career over the last 25 or 30 years, but um, I can't help remembering what an amazing experience I had the first time I went to Lotus and uh, seeing you working in that tiny kitchen and just uh, completely absorbed in uh, what you were doing and um, I just wonder if you ever long for um, the, I guess, the simplicity of that and the ability to be creative um, in a in a smaller environment like that. Again, you're saying to to do that again. Yeah. Would you? I mean, well, or is it is yeah, it just uh, old you, news you know, for you? You know, I I pass by uh, Lotus, but, well, not the property of Lotus. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, quite often. And every time when I look, I try not to look at it. Well, because it reminds me of work. 
and uh, I'm still working. Uh, but the intensity of work uh, during that period is, I think, uh, I don't. If, 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 if somebody, you know, I'm, if you, you saw the experience with the small kitchen, uh, the amount of work and the amount of research, the idea. Uh, I, 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 I was very happy. I, I done it, mm -hmm. and I've been there. And now I'm going through another stage of life that uh, related to my lifestyle, my family, you know, uh, my coworkers, my staff. So I'm growing in a different direction. But I'm still very particular about, you know, what food should be, you know, uh, in terms of culturally, uh, presentation, taste, and also, uh, you know, bringing more ideas back to Canada. And so uh, um, I haven't lost my passion of food. But my model have changed, I have to say. Broadly speaking, would you say that, I mean, she made it sound so glamorous. And then the first <laughs> thing you said was, oh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. It's a lot of work, right? It, yes. To, well, it was it, amazing for those of us who were there and had an opportunity to eat there and enjoy the experience. But I do appreciate what a huge... Um, Effort was required to uh, produce food at that at that scale, I guess. Thank you. Yes, uh, I really appreciate that uh, you mentioned Lotus. <laughs> it's really it, 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 it that restaurant really uh, you know very close to my heart. Yes, everything was beginning from there. Definitely. And that said, I know you still work a lot, yeah. but it's a different type. Because of I'm work, Chinese. Right? Yes. <laughs> You have to, <laughs> but it's a different type of work, right? Than toilet. Yeah, uh, you know, is 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 I have learned about uh, you know since I'm a father, uh, yeah, mentorship. You know, the word how to teach. Uh, you know, I, I never used to have patience. It's like uh, now I have to, you know, trying to. I still don't have a lot of patience, but I still try my best to deliver an idea so that person understand what that means. The the word is like. Why, number one, and how. So, um, so I have learned those trying to, to do that. But sometimes, you know, when you're working in such a pressure environment, uh, sometimes you don't have those time is why and how. Yeah. Let's do it, okay? Yeah, just yeah. do it. <laughs> just get it done. Yeah, just get it done. Oh, man. Yes. Ah, right there we have the Yay. flashy stick. Yay. Hello. Hi. So I just wanted to comment um, on the film from a, a female's pr perspective, um, especially for me. I'm one of three daughters, so this really resonated with me. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the themes in the film was definitely um, how women sacrifice a lot or how they want to martyr themselves. And so, um, you know, we saw with each of the daughters, the oldest daughter, she was like, I'm going to stay home. I'm going to take care of dad. Right. And then we realized that really when they were happy is when they were following their own joy. So for Sue, sir, um, how much in your daily life is sacrifice mixed with following your joy? That's a great point. Is it, well, or are they the one and the same? Say that again. What is uh, my what? Your day-to-day, -day, is yeah. it sacrifice and discipline, or is it just doing what you love? Is it both? Is one more than the other? Interesting question, yes. <laughs> She's good. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I think it's everything, you know. Um, the, you, you, you're talking about, you know, the daughter, you know, it, it, that's such a very, you know, deep Asian culture. You know, it, it's the replacement of a mother, uh, which is the, uh, the wife had passed away, and it's like the respect of taking care of your parents. Even though it's not three daughters, it's one son or one daughter, uh, they still have to take care of the, uh, the, the, the father or the mother. Um, but with my, uh, you know, with, with my way of seeing uh, how do you gauge what is important, I, I think it's everything. Uh, you know, when, when you have, uh, you know, uh, a family, uh, you know, you have to take care of, uh, there are certain things I, that is number one first is family, absolutely. So uh, number two, uh, because I, I feel that I already, have done so many things, uh, there are, uh, anything we do a restaurant has to come second. Because I already, before I have children, uh, right. because it was the restaurant first and the kitchen first. But now I can actually say, wait, my family first, second is the kitchen, third is you know, the, the other stuff. Right. Did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Really great point. Right there in the middle, Chef. Hi. Um, food is such a big part of your life. 
Uh, what would you do if you lost your sense of taste? Ouch. That's a bad question. <laughs> things are getting, <laughs> things are getting no, dark. You know, um, I th wow, that's really, uh, wow. <laughs> wow. All right, next I, question. I'll be, I'll be <laughs> too old to become a stripper, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Sorry, you know, I'm being, being myself. <laughs> Asian rotten sense of humor. I don't know, you know, uh, I would rather... That's why you need a Mr. Wen. Yeah, I would taste rather food. lost my hearing than actually lost my taste, I have to say. Yeah, me too. So that would be really awful. Yeah. <laughs> that would be suffering, that's for sure. You wouldn't, I don't be, know what to you say. wouldn't be able to try the camel yeah, balls that we had like earlier. It's like taking the best love out of me, you know? So. Here's hoping, chef. Wow, that's very depressing. I Thank know, you. right? <laughs> Can we pick it up? Can we just. Even just some encouragement in the back there. Here we go. Hi, chef. So you spoke a little bit about traveling. I was wondering what was the last dish or ingredient that really amazed you or inspired you? Or took you by surprise? Oh yes, I I, I just made that dessert um, actually maybe two weeks ago, and um, I, I was back in Southeast Asia. Um, I was uh, I was in uh, Hanoi in northern Vietnam, and I was in Singapore. Check out my restaurant. Uh, then I was in Hong Kong. I went to Macau. Uh, then where where is there one more place I went? Um, so anyhow, to, to answer your question is, I got inspired when I was in Hanoi, sitting, eating street food. Um, this uh, mango popsicle um, was inspired on the street. They are basically almost like, uh, you know, making popsi popsicle in front of you with a stainless steel tube. Uh, that's actually, it came from Thailand. Cool. But the flavor was Vietnamese style. Uh, he, has, he has kaffir lime leaf. In, in a mango puree. Mm. And then when I went to Hong Kong and I had dim sum with my son, and we have sago with a mango soup and, uh, and also with uh, um, grapefruit, which is pomelo. So uh, when I came back, I put those two things together, turned into a, a coconut ice cream with vanilla, and then with uh, young coconut meat, then with the tapioca with uh, uh, mango puree on top of red dragon fruits <laughs> uh, and also with julienne of kaffir lime leaf. And, uh, you know, that was one of the latest uh, 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 inspiration. Uh, and I'm, I'm very proud of it. My staff get excited, uh, you know, not, not just the kitchen, but even in front of the house because they're proud of seeing something very, very new. Sure. And so that was my last inspiration. It was that a sounds dessert. Sounds delicious. All Thank right, you. last question, man. I'm hungry now. That's it. We've got one more for Chef Suser Lee. Where's the flashing stick? Did someone say here? Sir, do you have the stick? I have to see the stick. Okay. Yes. Okay. We have okay, confirmation of the flashing stick. A bit. Um, I want to know what you were making today on your Instagram story with the look like beef. For Canada Day. Oh, ah, <laughs> you saw that already. Yeah, I saw oh, that. Oh, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so cool. Yeah, that's great. You know, this uh, uh, 150 years, uh, it, it meant a lot to me. And I think uh, uh, this year is special because, uh, you know, I, I have my family. My kids were born as a Canadian. Uh, and also uh, Canada have uh, given so much to me. Uh, for me this year, I want to celebrate big time. So I create this uh, from uh, coast to coast, from uh, meat to, uh, uh, to seafood lobster from Nova Scotia, you know, uh, beef from, uh, uh, from BC. So, so I want to combine those two elements, make, making a dish. Like this dish you saw is lobster with a mousseline, with lobster bisque, mm. and also with morel mushroom, and also wild sea asparagus. Uh, and also I have a, um, a glazed uh, double smoked bacon. Right on the top. Something very uh, simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're done here, Chef. I'm going to eat dinner. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming, really guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Lee, for coming. Uh, amazing evening, amazing film, and thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Yeah, thank pleasure. you so much.